Whether you're a student or a parent, today we're going to help you find the perfect laptop for school. I'm going to start with some quick tips which should help guide you through this important buying decision. After which we'll get straight down to business where I'll walk you through the best laptops that you can buy. In fact, if you want to just jump to our recommendations, don't worry, I won't feel offended. And as per usual, links to all the laptops that we recommend will be on our website and in the video's description. In fact, we have built something super cool for this video. We've launched a laptop laptop buying guide for students on our website. This will help you quickly narrow down the sea of laptops to the ones that are right for you. And since it's on our website, the benefits are that we can keep it up to date well after this video is published. Now, for school, we recommend buying a laptop that is small enough to be portable, yet has a screen large enough to get real work done. Students move around frequently and no one wants to lug a heavy beast of a machine with them. So you want a laptop that ideally weighs less than three pounds, but certainly no heavier than four. To get real work done, we recommend a laptop with at least a 14 inch display, but preferably a 14.5. That will enable you to see a decent amount of content. But it's not just the laptop screen size that determines how much content you can see. It's also its resolution and brightness. A higher resolution display increases clarity, allowing you to more comfortably make out small text. And a brighter display means better visibility. If you use a laptop in a bright environment and schools often have lots of windows, this will mean that you don't need to squint or increase the font size. Ideally, look for a laptop with a resolution greater than 1920 by 1200 pixels and at least 400 nits of brightness. In addition to this, there are several different types of laptops that you can buy. Apple's MacBooks are a fantastic choice for students. They are the best built of any laptop that we've tested. And that means that you'll have less to worry about. And due to Apple's Excellent M series of processors, they deliver best in class battery life, almost never have fan noise, and they don't feel that warm to the touch. Yet, they are still very powerful. And since Apple's higher end pro laptops have powerful graphics, they are also a great choice for those doing disciplines that require that. Their downsides though are that they are pretty pricey, especially with their upgrades, which many students will have to buy, particularly those studying disciplines with high performance computing needs. And you may hear that some software doesn't work on a Mac. However, since Apple has been such a dominating force in the laptop space for some time now, this is now pretty limited. It's really just mostly AAA games and running Linux that doesn't work. Now, if you want a laptop with better value for money, or you need that broader application support, or you just prefer Windows, a laptop with an Intel or AMD processor may be the way to go. These laptops support the widest variety of software available, including other operating systems like Linux. And there is a huge variety of laptops available, from very cheap ones to expensive ones with powerful dedicated graphics. So you can really find one that is right for you. However, these laptops do suffer from one or more of the following issues poor battery life, fan noise, and heat you feel. This is because the processors in them, they are not that power efficient. Now, if you buy one of these laptops with dedicated graphics, those issues that I mentioned will be amplified, and the laptop itself, it can be quite big and bulky. There are newer versions coming later in 2024, which is super exciting. So make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on for that, as we will be reviewing them as soon as they are released. Anyway, these laptops are very viable for all types of students, so long as you aren't fussy with some of the downsides that I just mentioned, and you're happy to carry a small charger with you, which to be honest, you should really be doing anyway. Now, if you want the best of both worlds, you should consider the new breed of laptops with Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. Their battery life, heat and fan noise is better than most Intel and AMD laptops, but it's not quite as good as a MacBook. Yet, their value for money is as good as any traditional Intel and AMD laptop, and they're so Software compatibility promises to be similar to a traditional Windows 1 too. However, since these are using a newer technology, we've found that they don't quite deliver on that promise. A bunch of specialized software just doesn't work on these at all, or it doesn't work that well. Over time, we do expect that to change, but for now, that's the case. Therefore, at this time, we recommend buying one only if you use your laptop for basic tasks like web browsing, email, and Microsoft Office. Those applications work very well on these laptops. Or if you've done your research and are certain that applications that you need to run will work. Oh, and if you want a game on your laptop, do not buy one of these. The graphics in them and their game compatibility are far from ideal. Finally, Chromebooks and tablets. These are the most restrictive devices in terms of their software compatibility. We and many universities do not recommend them. All right, 
As you can hear, the right laptop for you depends a lot on what classes you're going to take and the software that you will need to run. Please check with an academic advisor at your school or a current student or even recent alumni. Let them explain what software you'll be running. But I wouldn't necessarily follow their advice on which laptop to buy. That's because they may suggest one that was good when they were at school, but no longer is. Or they may just not have tried the wide variety of laptops that are available, so they may not know which one is best. Now, many laptops come in different configurations. Most modern processors are plenty powerful for school, certainly the ones in the laptops that we will be recommending. That being said, we do want your laptop to have the right configuration to get you through four years of school and give you some flexibility if you change disciplines or even hobbies. Therefore, we recommend a laptop with a minimum of 16 gig of RAM and 512 gig of storage. For those doing intense graphical tasks, we'd like to see you with at least an NVIDIA RTX 4050 or an Apple M1 Pro chip. Now, as your laptop is going to be your primary tool while at school, it is critical that it works reliably. Look, some laptops are more reliable than others. As I mentioned, we have found Apple's MacBooks to be the most reliable. But no matter which manufacturer you buy from, your laptop can have issues. The most important thing is for it to be covered under warranty. So before you spend all your money on the laptop itself, I would recommend checking out whether an extended warranty is available and budgeting for it. Finally, students have access to discounts. Use them, obviously. There are also a ton of other ways you could save money when buying your next laptop. We have a full guide out on this, which I'll link below. All right, let's get into the fun part of the video where we recommend our favorite laptops for students. To understand who which is good for, let us introduce you to Harvey, Trinity, Wade, and Henry. Harvey represents those students studying degrees with light computing needs, such as med, law, and business. For those with more intense computing needs, such as computer science, data science, and cybersecurity, laptops for you will be marked as good for students like Trinity. For those that need powerful graphics for courses that involve 3D modeling, such as architecture or mechanical engineering, or even those doing video editing, you'll be indicated by the Wades of the world. And for those students who like to do some hardcore gaming on the side, those laptops will be marked as suitable for the Henrys of the world. The MacBook Air, it is the one to buy if you just want a high quality laptop where there is very little you need to worry about. It feels premium, it is very lightweight, it has long battery life, it doesn't get distractingly warm to the touch, nor have annoying fan noise. In fact, it doesn't even have a fan. This laptop, it just checks a lot of boxes. Its biggest downside is that it is expensive, particularly for the upgrades, which most students will probably want. You see, the base model only comes with 8 gig of RAM and a small amount of storage, which is honestly pretty disgraceful. For a good number of students like Harvey who have basic computing needs, this will work. However, it is far from ideal. For example, even if you're designing clothing, you may run 3D modeling tools to render what the clothes look like. If you don't have enough memory, your applications will run slower or in some rarer cases, not even open. So if buying an eight gig model of the MacBook Air, please ensure that you won't have any intensive computing needs. If you are budget constrained, we'd advise you look at buying an older MacBook Air with M2 or even the Air M1 from 2020. Both are still excellent machines, especially if you get them for a heavy discount. Now, if you're shopping on a tight budget, say $800 or less, and you want more value or you just don't want a Mac, Asus's ZenBook 14 is the way to go. This laptop is from Asus's premium range, so it actually punches well above its price in terms of its overall build quality. It comes with either an AMD or Intel Core Ultra processor, which are both plenty powerful for student needs. And unlike a MacBook Air, at this price point, it comes with 16 gig of memory and 512 gig of storage. And that makes this laptop better suited for students like Trinity in addition to students like Harvey. Between the two models, the AMD variant is cheaper, offering more value, plus it has better battery life. But if you want better graphics, say you're doing some light gaming, the Intel version is the one to get. Its integrated graphics are the strongest of any Windows laptop right now. That being said, certainly not good enough to compete with a laptop with dedicated graphics. The main downsides though of both these laptops is at the price point, you'll likely be getting them with a 1920 by 1200 resolution display. Although this does help boost battery life, and it certainly does, you may find that content on screen just does not look as sharp as other laptops in this roundup. If that annoys you, look for the ZenBook 14X from last year. It has a larger 14.5 inch display that is high resolution. Unfortunately though, its processor is less efficient, so expect pretty bad battery life. Now, 
If you have around $1,000 or more to spend and you don't want a MacBook Air, we feel that the HP Spectre 14 is a better buy than a more expensive configuration of the ZenBook. Like the highest end ZenBook 14, it has a vibrant OLED display that is high resolution with a fast refresh rate. But the Spectre 14 has a much more comfortable keyboard than the ZenBook. It gives you two-in-one tablet capabilities so you can draw or take notes on it, and it just feels better built. As mentioned earlier, since the Spectre 14 has Intel's core ultra processor, casual gaming is good to go on this laptop. That being said, it isn't perfect. Even though its trackpad is a more modern haptic one, which is very accurate, right now it does have palm rejection issues. If this bothers you, you'll want to buy an external mouse. And this laptop does exhibit the usual issues with Intel processors. Its battery life is so-so, and in a very quiet room you may hear fan noise. Finally, there is a screen door effect on its OLED display. If you stare very closely at a solid light colour, you may see some coloured pixels breaking up the image. This is a common issue on AMD and Intel laptops with OLED displays right now and it does occur on the ZenBooks. Overall, this is a great all-round laptop for students like Harvey and Trinity, as well as those who want to draw or take handwritten notes on their laptop. Now, if like Trinity or even Neo, you are super hardcore into computers, we have a very special recommendation for you. The Framework Laptop 13. This laptop has two unique traits. Firstly, it is completely upgradable. Everything from the storage to the processor to the ports. And this gives you unparalleled future proofing and makes the laptop immensely flexible. Heck, you can even reuse your old framework motherboard by putting it into a Cooler Master case. Now you have two computers. Secondly, framework laptops have extensive Linux support. Its screen though is a bit on the smaller size at 13.5 inches, but it does support a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which means that you can see more code going down the page. The main downside of the framework laptop is that it just doesn't feel as premium as competing laptops at its price point. In fact, I'd describe it from a look and feel perspective as similar to buying a laptop from 5 to 7 years ago. And like most Intel and AMD laptops right now, it does have lower battery life, worse fan noise and heat when compared to laptops with an Apple or Qualcomm processor. Overall, if you're a tech enthusiast, buy the Framework laptop. If you want a more premium experience with a Windows laptop that is, buy the Spectre 14 or one with a Snapdragon processor. And on that note, the Surface Laptop 7 is a great option for students. It feels extremely premium and it looks spectacular. If you want a laptop that delivers coffee store envy, this is it. Compared to the MacBook Air, it has a better port selection, a more modern display, its keyboard is slightly more comfortable and its trackpad is just as good. And on that display, it is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So for reading documents, you'll see more text going down the page than on a regular laptop with a screen this size. Fan noise on this laptop is minimal and its battery life is very decent, but it's not perfect. In any performance task, this laptop feels warm. And as mentioned, you really need to have patience with these new Snapdragon laptops. You may notice some instability, so save your work regularly. And some applications that are not built for ARM might not work. That being said, this laptop is still an excellent one for a student like Harvey, who has very light computing needs. Now, we bought all three of the Surface Laptop 7s, and the one to get is definitely the X Plus. It offers unparalleled value for money. And when you're doing basic tasks, which is what these laptops are good for right now, you really aren't going to notice a difference of moving up to an x -Elite processor, other than perhaps that it's more expensive. Now, we're going to up the ante and talk about more powerful laptops for students like Trinity, Wade and Henry. Starting with the GOAT. If you don't specifically need Windows or Linux, you really should be buying the MacBook Pro 14. This laptop is as close to perfect as you can get. It gives you incredible performance, and that includes graphical performance. Yet it still gives you very long battery life, little heat you feel, and no fan noise in most use cases. No other laptop comes close to delivering what this one does. Its screen is high quality, its port selection is very good, its trackpad is awesome, its keyboard is comfortable, and its speakers are the best of any 14-inch laptop. If I could personally own one laptop, this one would be it. Its main downside though is that it is expensive, and you can't upgrade it after you buy. Now, Apple will try to bait you with the M3 version of this laptop for a cheaper price that is. It's a trap! Don't do it. 
That version comes with 8GB of RAM, which will be severely limiting for the type of students who should probably buy this laptop. Even if you upgrade the M3 model that is to 16GB, it's still not worth it. You may as well spend the extra dollars to get the M3 Pro version. That model has many additional benefits. A much more powerful processor with faster access to memory. It comes with more memory at 18GB versus 16 It also has a useful extra USB-C port on the right side. You guys get the picture. That is the model to get. If it's too expensive, look for one of the older MacBook Pro 14s with the M2 Pro or M1 Pro chips. They're almost as good. Heck, I still personally use the M2 Pro MacBook Pro 14. Check out our website. If they are available, that's where you'll find them. But what happens if you want to play the full catalogue of AAA games on your laptop, just like Henry, or you want Windows or even Linux? Well, Lenovo's Legion Slim 514 is far and away the best of the bunch. Every other high-powered 14-inch Windows laptop has significant downsides like heat, fan noise or throttled performance. This is the only one that feels cool to the touch while gaming. And yes, there is fan noise, but it is as good as you're going to get for a laptop like this. It has a large 14.5-inch display and it extends its lead over its other competitors by being one of the cheapest. Certainly the best value for money. But again, it's not perfect. It's a relatively big and bulky laptop for a 14-inch one and its graphics maxes out at a 4060. Look. There are many other 14-inch gaming laptops to consider, but each comes with more significant cons. If you want a more premium gaming laptop, the HB Omen Transcend 14 delivers a very comfortable experience. Its heat and fan noise are absolutely minimal, and it looks better and is more compact than the Legion Slim 514. But to achieve this, its graphics are significantly throttled. Its RTX 4060 massively underperforms the Legion. This is a laptop to buy if you're a student first and a gamer second. Now, another option is to get the Asus Aphiris G14. This gaming laptop is by far the smallest and most portable of the bunch. It feels very premium and it can be had with much more powerful NVIDIA graphics than just the 4060 of the Legion. But this laptop, it gets very warm. It's warm in light use and it's very warm while gaming. I'd only get it if you are resilient to heat you feel or you use it with an external monitor, mouse and keyboard. That's in your dorm room. That way you can get the best of both worlds. A portable laptop when you travel and a powerful laptop at home where you won't feel heat because your hands, they won't be on the laptop's keyboard. In fact, this setup highlights why we haven't recommended any 16-inch laptops in this roundup. We feel that most people would be better suited plugging a smaller, more portable laptop into an external monitor when at home. But if you do want a 16-inch laptop, nothing beats the all-round package that is the Yoga Pro 9i. It does everything well to very well at an extremely competitive price. It has no application compatibility issues as it's a traditional Windows laptop with Intel and you can enjoy AAA gaming on it with its RTX 4060 or even 4070 in some markets. It comes fully equipped with 32 gig of memory. Its screen is a bright mini LED one with a fast refresh rate. Its keyboard is very comfortable and its trackpad works well enough. It is also relatively compact for what it is. But the icing on the cake is we've seen it go for as low as $1,600. This is about half the price of a MacBook Pro 16, yet you are getting 90% of what that laptop is. Actually, you can run AAA games on the Yoga Pro 9i, so you may be getting more. Well, that's all we got for you. Which laptop will you be buying for your studies? Let us know with a comment down below. And make sure to check out our website regularly. That's where you'll find the best deals and all the laptops that we recommend for various types of users. Plus, we keep it up to date, so you may find newer laptops recommended there well after this video is published. YouTuber Shtick Time, make sure to like and subscribe. Not only does it help this channel grow, which means that we can make more videos for you, but it makes all our dearest parents very proud. Good luck in your studies, make your parents proud. Until next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.